Hi, welcome to the Demon Life. I'm your host, Nick Fabrizio. Today, I'm honored to have a special guest with us, Mr. Doug Ireland, the Sports Information Director here at Northwestern State. Doug, how's it going today? Wonderful. It's a Wednesday. Uh, Wednesdays are the best. But Doug, I have questions about where, how you got here, where are you from? So let's start. Uh, where are you from exactly? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got here as a student. Um, I came to Northwestern on an academic scholarship, which nobody nowadays would believe. Really? Wow. Uh, came from Jonesboro, Louisiana, which is an hour northeast of here, uh, 20 miles south of the uh, town of Ruston, which uh, is not a recommended uh, destination. <laughs> yes, sir. And um, came here in 1978 as a student, a uh, broadcast journalism major, in fact, and uh, had a great uh, experience as an undergraduate and found myself back here uh, working full time in 1989. 1989. Wow. That's that's a long time. You weren't born then. Uh, no, sir. My dad was actually just left here at the time. Uh, what is your, like, so you cover sports a lot. Do you have any favorite professional teams, anything like that? I know college, you'll definitely say Northwestern State, even if that's not the full truth. But. Oh, it is absolutely <laughs> the truth. And, uh, it's, you know, it's funny. You get into a job that deals with sports. You love sports, obviously. Yes, sir, of course. But you get so consumed by what you're doing. I don't have time, and most people in my profession don't have time to avidly follow a team. Uh, that said, my entire family is from Western Pennsylvania, and I naturally root for anything Pittsburgh. Oh. And then I root for the New Orleans Saints. There are, you know, state's team and uh, some good people down there, and the New Orleans Pelicans. Okay, I know. So you kind of hit on it a little bit. You you're always consumed in sports as an SID. Do you, when you go home that night, do you, do you watch sports or are you kind of consumed by it all day that you just kind of turn it off and try to stay away from it for a little bit? You hit the nail on the head in that um, you are consumed by it every day, every hour that I'm working. Uh, when I get home, it's got to be something compelling. I'm just typically not thrown on a ball game to watch a ball game. Uh, it's usually there may be somebody that I know or, or you know, whether they're playing, coaching in the front office or it is a particularly interesting, compelling game and you want to watch. But uh, yeah, if I'm, if I'm away from uh, sports, I'm probably not watching yeah. hour after hour yes, of uh, sports on TV. Yes, I, I know I find myself going home every night watching sports, especially with these playoffs on right now. Uh, kind of as an SID though, what, what do you, like, can you tell our viewers what exactly you do? Uh, it's evolving constantly. Uh, that's the first thing you've got to do. We deal with the media and that means that you have to grow and evolve with the media. You think about what television is like now as opposed to what it was like five years ago, 10 years ago. Uh, you think about uh, newspapers and that is a tremendous change. The internet uh, came into being during my time here at Northwestern <laughs> and totally uh, revolutionized how we do things and why we do things. Essentially, we're responsible for uh, creating the most positive uh, storylines that we can about Northwestern State University through our athletic program and that means through conventional media radio television print media and through social media and um, it's easy because there are hundreds of great stories from Northwestern State Athletics and Northwestern State University any given time you look for them. Mm, so, so you kind of hit on it right there what what is your favorite event that you've witnessed at Northwestern State, or could you hit on a couple that really you remember off the top of your head? Yeah, it's easy. The shot in 2006, the, the game in which the Demons won in the NCAA tournament, March Madness to beat Iowa. Uh, Legendary shot. Yeah, just nothing could possibly compare to that. Uh, even if we win future NCAA basketball games, which we certainly could, uh, the dramatic impact of that play um, will always resonate as one of the great moments in NCAA tournament history, oh, not just Northwestern athletic or definitely overall still university. shown on some highlight tapes. Oh, it's incredible. Madness, yeah, so. it comes back every year. I mean, we've been on a soap opera. We've been in an advertising wow. campaign for Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing how it resonates in different ways. And one of the neat ways it resonates is that here at Northwestern, there are students right now going through academically on a scholarship that emerged from General Motors Corporation because that play was voted the most sensational game-changing moment of that tournament. We got a $100,000 scholarship endowment here at Northwestern out of that play. 
that, that play was something else. Uh, so as you kind of hit on basketball, any other sports that you? Oh, you, you, it's, it's hard to limit it to one sport, uh, and, and I couldn't. Uh, but um, <laughs> football jumps to mind. Of course, the win over Louisiana Tech a couple of years ago was so meaningful for so many different reasons. Um, beating TCU in Fort Worth in 2001. Uh, some great games in our playoff runs, playing three home playoff games in 1998 here at Turpin Stadium. That was really just tremendous just to see the, the uh, support and, and the energy in this community and on this campus. Uh, that's just football, you know, baseball, softball. Golly, I mean, I, I, we could talk for another too, too many 45 events. minutes <laughs> yes, and I'd, I'd still be leaving a lot out. Uh, yes, sir. I've actually heard some, uh, some stories about when you first got to Northwestern State. I heard uh, traveling to the games try and stay updated on sports. You'd actually read a newspaper while driving sometimes. Is it? Don't recommend that. <laughs> Not proud of that. But yeah, uh, you know, you, you're kind of an information junkie. Yes, and um, in some places in this part of the world, there's not a lot to look at and there wasn't a lot of traffic. Uh, Would never do no, it in traffic. Definitely not. It's definitely being and, safe. And, and don't do it anymore and don't text and drive. <laughs> uh, you know, there's just too many bad things that can happen. It's not worth it. Hey. I will say the, uh, Hand, hands-free telephone is a great thing. Uh, definitely getting sports updates. You yeah. probably have the satellite radio going all the way. You're trying to learn gotta something. Got to do that. Yeah, satellite right. radio. You got, you got to enjoy that. So, uh, what does your typical day of being an SID consist of? Uh, you're probably jam-packed all day trying to help out news channels and is there anything that? Well, first of all, I have a staff, and and that's very beneficial, and it's grown through the years. I have uh, two tremendous assistants with me, Matt Vines and Jason Pugh, who are outstanding. I have a couple of graduate assistants, we have some student workers, we have a tremendous administrative assistant, Ronnie Pellegrin has been with us for 12 years now. Um, and we need those people to do everything we do because we've got the uh, 14 NCAA Division I sports that Northwestern competes in. And, and in my time here, we have made a big commitment to treat every sport as if it was my favorite, <laughs> you know, because uh, Every athlete we have competing, has family, has friends, uh, is putting their all into their sport. So that cross country athlete to us is just as important as Zeke Woodley in basketball, you know, superstar, uh, mm -hmm. because the level of commitment and, and the workload is, is no different. So we strive to uh, be sure that from a media standpoint, their experience is the same as best we can as any other student athlete. So my day really starts at 7.05 in the morning. We do four radio uh, spots uh, in Natchitoches, uh, Manny and Leesville uh, between seven and eight o'clock talking Northwestern sports. And been doing that for since almost the month I got here. Uh, and the reason is the exposure it gets for Northwestern. And we can occasionally mention, you know, things that aren't related to athletics but brag about the university when we have enrollment increase and we have super things happen. It's about exposure for the university. And there are so many great things going on at this university any given week. It's, it's nice to have the opportunity to brag and to tell a radio audience about that. So then it's you know, after eight, uh, get into the office and whatever the task may be. Uh, you think about it, sports are played typically in the afternoons and at night. Mm -hmm but we need to be in there in the morning doing things both to get ready for future events, to um, be sure that uh, coverage is wrapped up from previous events, to handle administrative duties and other uh, tasks, make strategic decisions and planning. Uh, when I, as soon as we finish this interview, uh, I have a twice weekly staff meeting that we'll, we have on Monday morning and Wednesday afternoon to be sure we're tracking on the right things, to know where everybody's going, what everybody's doing. Uh, so we can best uh, maximize uh, all of our creative talents, efforts, and time. All right, one final question I got for you. You guys do these things on Facebook all the time. I see them all the time. Uh, demon of the days. Who's your favorite, most memorable demon of the day that y'all have had this year, at least? I have to be Nick Fabrizio, huh? Oh, no, you're, you're flattering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to say, I, I don't get to watch every one. I wish I did. That's where my staff does a great job. I've, I've done a very... A uh, small part of, of that, I am proud that it was partly my idea, <laughs> at least. But um, you know, it was it came out of the idea that 
through some focus groups, we were told that people wanted to know more about who our student athletes were and who the coaches are and, and who the staff members are. And so in, in roughly two minutes, we provide that picture. So to say that, that one has been any more exceptional than the others, I, I'd be remiss if I singled out one. Um, every one, even many of the athletes who I may not know yet, it's really entertaining to watch those things and find out a little bit about who they are, what makes them tick, what they enjoy, and uh, whether they prefer, you know, cake or ice cream. <laughs> yes. All the important. <laughs> is a hot dog a sandwich, Nick? I, I don't believe so. I, I think a hot dog's a hot dog. Yeah, a hot dog <laughs> stands on its own. Yeah, summer or winter? Uh, I'm a summer guy. I'm from Florida, so beaches. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that the beach or mountain thing also uh, comes yeah, up. But yeah. That's the fun kind of stuff we do, and and really it is about exposing uh, the young people in our athletic program to others because. Every student here at Northwestern brings something to the table, and I, I know that the student athletes here are remarkable young people uh, who are committed to an education, who want to be the best they can possibly be athletically. They're highly motivated, and uh, it's it's fun to shine the light on those people. Yes, sir. I, I know we could probably talk for another 30 minutes, but I got to wrap it up here today. Thank you for tuning in to Demon Life. I'm your host, Nick Fabrizio. Doug, it's been a, it's been a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.